Hello everyone and welcome back to Moto Scotty. So in this video I'm going to show you how to change the coolant in your car. So even though at the time I'm uh, publishing this video it's winter and it's not the typical season to have overheating issues with your car, it's still important to keep your coolant fresh or up to date as you can say because the coolant is not only coolant, it's also antifreeze. So in the summer it keeps your coolant down to operating temperature and in the winter it will obviously also keep it at the same temperature when it's running but it will also prevent the engine to freeze or the water that's inside the, the coolant system in the engine to freeze and then to crack the, the engine block should it really get really cold. Therefore it's very important to keep your coolant uh, liquid up to date and eventually change it according to your maintenance, uh, maintenance plan. On my car it's every five years as far as I know and that time's up and I'm going to change it now. Long story short, fresh coolant will keep your engine run at operating temperature and protect all the components that are involved in the system. Right, but how do I know what coolant to use? Well, it's very simple. You just have to know what color the coolant of your car needs to be and then you just buy any coolant that has the same color and it should apply, it should conform to the specific chemical uh, specifications that uh, your car actually needs. In my case I'm going with the glycentine or glycentine, however you want to say it, G30 from BASF and I'm going to go with the 50-50 mixture. So you can basically mix it, you have to mix it to distilled water but you can determine the ratio yourself. So I'm going with the 50-50 mixture so the coolant will have, will, like the antifreeze will work uh, down to minus 35 degrees Celsius. So I'm really getting prepared to those harsh winters we have here in the Alps. Anyway, let's get a look at the tools and parts we'll need. A bucket that can take at least 5 liters, a T20 and a T27 screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a 10mm and a 21mm socket, pliers, gloves, eye protection, approximately 9 liters of distilled water, we'll have 6 liters for the flush and another 3 liters for the mix with the coolant. And then of course 3 liters of pure pink red coolant as I mentioned, I'm using uh, Glycentine G30. Now we need to get access to the drain plug. On the RCZ, we need to take two plastic covers off first. And since the lighting is quite bad on the car, I'm taking the liberty to show you the panels removed. On the big panels, you have four clips in the back, five T20 bolts surrounding it, and another three 10mm bolts on the back, as well as one on the small panel. Lastly, there's another T27 bolt on the small panel. So now we could actually go ahead and take the drain plug off and let all the water like, pour out. But in order to let the water flow out more easily, I would su suggest to just take the radiator cap off. So in some cars you can actually just take, there is a radiator cap which you can just easily take off. In other cars, like on the RCZ, you have to take the cap of the overflow reservoir off because that's the only way you can put water in. So on the RCZ the drain plug is on the left side of the radiator. Just put the bucket underneath it and open the drain plug. You might need to use a 21 millimeter socket just to open it up initially. Once all the water is out put the drain plug back in and fill it with distilled water only. Start the car, turn on the heater and the fan to max. This will open up the valve for the coolant to flow through the heater core, which is what heats up your cabin. Now drive around to warm up your car, it usually takes about 15 minutes, and pay close attention to the water temperature gauge, it should stay in the middle, it should go up to the middle and stay there. Afterwards, turn off the car and let it cool down. And once the engine is cool, you can drain the water again. So what you also could do is just uh, let, the, let the engine run with the drain plug out and let all of the water, let the water pump, pump out all the residual water. But I really didn't want to do it because I didn't, re I didn't want to harm the, the water pump. I'm not sure if it's a good thing for the water pump to run dry, so I didn't do it. And since I'm flushing it before I fill it up with the definitive coolant, it'll be clean enough. Now let's do the same thing one more time, this time with the actual coolant. And as you can see, simply mix equal quantities of water and coolant and you're good to go.
put the drain plug in, fill in, in, fill in the coolant halfway, then start the engine to fill in the rest and let the air bubbles come out. So some word of advice, don't be surprised if the coolant level drops again significantly even after you've topped it up twice, at least when it comes to the RCZ. The system in the RCZ is known to be quite tricky to perch and if you don't have a pressure system to apply in your garage, you'll have to do it the old fashioned way and simply drive with the heating on until all of the air bubbles are pushed out of the system. Also, and I mention it every time I end up with toxic waste, Please always bring your used coolant to your local recycle center. They should take it for free, and if not, you should still do it. Alright guys, so before I finish this video, I want to give a quick shout out to a Facebook group I was actually made aware of over a year ago by one of you, one of, one of the viewers. And I was actually invited to join uh, some time ago. It is the RCZ Meeting Spenelux, Spenelux for Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg, of course. And they are organized, they are a RCZ fan group and they organize meetings, get togethers and road trips uh, all over the years. So road trip through the Alps, Dolomites, French Alps, Austria, do track days. And on top of all those track days and uh, road trips through the Alps, they have their annual meet and greet in Zeeland in the Netherlands. And the next time will be next May, at the end of May. And they already have over 120 confirmed participants for that weekend and the reason why I'm so excited about it is, is that I have the privilege to be one of them and I can wait to get there at the end of next May and see all those different RCZs and exchange with uh, fellow RCZ enthusiasts. So check out the Facebook group and if you're in Europe definitely ask to join if you're interested in attending any of those RCZ meetings, RCZ get-togethers and have fun! Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and also don't hesitate to check out our Facebook website and engage with us there. And as you already know, until next time!